Once again, let me welcome you to this channel. Thank you for making it a point always to watch this lesson. I believe you're getting it clear. Uh, if you missed the last, the last lesson, make sure you go back and watch it so that at least you're not left behind. Uh, we were discussing resultant forces and we are still continuing with resultant forces. We said that the resultant force is the one whose effect is the same as the effect that will be experienced by the body when two or more forces act on that object. So that's how we define our resultant force. We looked at how to get the resultant force. Today we are going to continue with the resultant forces. Uh, we are moving to example number one right away and says So the question is right up here. The figure below shows the three forces which are acting on a ball bearing. We have a force of 5 newtons, we have a force of 6 newtons and a force of 7 newtons. And required is for us to obtain the resultant force on this ball bearing. As we saw in the previous lesson, we saw that if we are to obtain the resultant force, then we get the difference between the two opposite forces of which we get the force which is bigger minus the force which is smaller so you need to see which side has the larger force and which side has the smaller force so it will be that side with the larger force minus the side with the smaller force and the body will move towards that direction where the force is greater. So in this case we have two sides. We have the left and we have the right. There are two forces which are acting to the right, that is 5 newtons and 6 newtons. And we have only one force acting to the left and that is 7 newtons. So we need to first obtain the total forces which are acting towards the left. And when you do that, we do that by summing up these two, that will be 5 plus 6, which will automatically give us 11. So, in our solution, I will redraw this, but now with these two forces combined. So, I will have the forces acting to the right, will be the combination of these two, which is 5 plus 6, which gives us 11 newtons. And that acting to the left is 7 newtons. So if I'm to get the resultant, we say the resultant is FR, which is going to be 11, because it's greater than 7, so the resultant force will be in the direction of 11 newtons. So it will be 11 minus 7. So it's 11 minus 7. This gives us 4 newtons. But to the right. So that will be the resultant force on that uh, body. But let's see EG number two, especially where we have forces acting at right angle.
So we have series of forces acting on this body. We have 12 newtons which is acting to the right. We have 7 newtons is acting to the left. We have 9 newtons acting upward. Uh, we have 13 together with 8 newtons which are acting downward. So they want us to get the resultant force. If we are to get the resultant force in our solution, if we are to get the resultant force on this object, then we need to first get the resultant force horizontally, then we get the resultant force vertically. So horizontally, we see two forces acting in opposite direction, that is 12 newtons and 7 newtons. So 12 newtons is acting to the left, I mean to the right, and uh, 7 newtons is acting to the left. So the resultant force is going to act to the right. Why? Because 7 newtons, I mean 12 newtons is greater than 7 newtons. So I'll draw this, I say to the right. To my right, I will have 12 newtons minus 7 newtons. Oh, let me redraw this. I can redraw this. This is 12 newtons. And then this one, I can bring it here. The 7 newtons, because it's acting to the right, to the left, I can bring it here. This is 7 newtons. Then up here, I have 9 newtons. Then down, you can see down, we have two forces. We have 13 and 8. That gives us 21 newtons when you add them. 13 plus 8, that's 21. So from here, we can now get exactly uh, the resultant force. So if this is my body, you can easily see that uh, 12 newtons is greater than 7 newtons horizontally. And so the resultant force will act to the right. By which amount? 12 minus 7. So 12 minus 7 to the right is going to be 12 minus 7 that is 5 newtons. Then when it comes to this, you see there's 21 newtons acting downwards and we have 19, 9, 9 newtons acting upwards. 21 being greater than 9, that means the resultant force will act downwards. So the resultant force is acting downwards and it's 21 minus 9, which gives us trade off newtons. Good. So we have now 5 newtons and 12 newtons, which are acting at right angle to each other. 5 newtons and 12 newtons are acting at right angle to each other. And you say if we have two forces which are acting at right angle to each other, then the resultant force is caught by obtaining the using Pythagoras theory. So the resultant force is here. You can call this to be our resultant force. F what is? F R. So I call this one to be A, this one to be B, and this one to be C. So we use Pythagoras theory. We say from A squared plus B squared equals to C squared. So A squared is going to be 5. This 5. So we shall have 5 squared plus C, B squared, which is going to be trade off. Trade off squared should be equal to C squared, which is F result squared. So this is 25. This is plus uh, 144, should be equal to F R squared. 25 plus 144, that is 169, should be equal to F R squared. So you take the square root on both sides. So F R is going to be square root of 169, which is 13 newtons. So this will be the resultant force on this body. If there's any question, please make sure you tap on the live chat. You let me know so that at least I can respond immediately if you have any question on this. And today we are winding up on forces. That means in our next lesson, we shall see something else. Is there any question on that? OK. 
Okay, fine. So we have this question in statement form. Two forces, three newtons and four newtons, act at right angle on the body and required for us to calculate the resultant force on the body. So if they are acting at right angle, then that means that uh, they are acting like this. So in our solution, we can redraw this. We can draw it. Then if this is the body, then the three newtons and four newtons are acting at right angle so you find the like three newtons here I'm just trying to assume here though your three newtons can take any direction but as long as the angle between them between the two is 90 degrees so this is for newtons the angle between them should be 90 degrees that's what they mean by three forces I mean three newtons and four newtons acting at right angle so the resultant force is going to be here, FR. So I call this one to be A, this one to be B, and this one to be C, Pythagoras theorem. You have A squared plus B squared equals to C squared. So our A is the squared plus our B, which is for squared should be equal to C squared. Then this is 9 plus 16 should be equal to C squared. So this is 25 equals to C squared. So taking the square root on both sides, you realize that C equals what? 5. But remember our C is the resultant force. We make a conclusion there. That's why the resultant force is equal to 5 newtons. Good. Is all that simple? It does not take a lot of time for you to get the resultant force on a given body. I see this in case of any question, please feel free to contact to get into our chat and then you type it there so that at least we get to know what is taking place. Otherwise, uh, We are winding up with this. I want you to do these numbers and then you submit in Google Classroom for marking.
So I want you to try these numbers, try these numbers and then you see whether you can easily pass them. That will give us a go ahead for the next lesson. In our next lesson, we are going to leave resultant forces. We are going to go to something else, and that is frictional force. Please endeavor not to miss, and don't go for frictional force when you have not done these numbers. Thank you so much once again for watching and for following the lesson. If you have not subscribed, please tap the red button and subscribe so that you can get notifications for more videos. Otherwise, I wish you all the best during the course of the lesson. I've told you, in case of any challenge, tap on the live chat. You'll be talking to me directly. Or you can contact me on my WhatsApp number, which is 070 375 0387 plus 256 70 375-0387 For those who are not out of Uganda you can use that code and you'll be talking to me directly So that's that uh, for now we are ending our lesson wish you all the best and goodbye for now See you